This is ABC 7 News at 6. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Peter Dubois. And I'm Beth Jones. First tonight, a Massachusetts man who was arrested for the death of a Skowhegan woman made his first court appearance Monday. Our Sierra Jordan has the latest. After a 20-year-old woman was found dead in her home early Saturday morning, a Massachusetts man is now facing a murder charge in connection with her death. First matter I'd like to take up is the matter of State of Maine versus Jason Serval. Shortly after 5.30 p.m., the Skowhegan Police Department say they received a 911 call from a man reporting an assault at 912 Cannon Road in Skowhegan. As officials arrived, they found the caller with a head injury and Abbott dead in the home. The Madison male was later transported to Reddington Fairview General Hospital in Skowhegan, where he was treated and later released. Maine State Police detectives and evidence technicians spent Saturday conducting interviews and investigating Abbott's home. Around 3.20 p.m. Saturday, state police detectives arrested 19-year-old Jason Serval of Massachusetts at the Skowhegan Police Department, and he was charged with murder in connection with Abbott's death. Officials say Serval was an acquaintance to Abbott, but did not elaborate on how the two know each other. You do have the right to have the matter presented to the grand jury. Count two, sir, is a charge of aggravated assault. That's a class B offense as alleged. That's punishable by up to 10 years in prison and up to a $20,000 fine. Serva was transported to the Somerset County Jail and is being held without bail. The chief medical examiner's office conducted an autopsy July 17th and ruled Abbott's death a homicide. In studio, I'm Sierra Joyner reporting for ABC 7 and Fox 22. Meanwhile, four people are injured following a multiple vehicle crash in Fairfield on Sunday. According to the Fairfield Police Department, the crash occurred just after 11 a.m. at the intersection of Norwich Walk Road and Wood Street. Police say of the four injured, one is in serious condition and was transferred to Northern Light Eastern Maine Medical Center via life flight. Following an investigation, officers determined a Subaru Forester driven by 36-year-old Jared Peasley of Waterville was struck from behind by a Chevy Silverado driven by 74-year-old Linda Abbott of Anson. The collision forced Peasles, Peasley's vehicle into the path of a second Subaru Forester driven by 38-year-old Kristen Simon of Oceanside, New York, sending her vehicle into a ditch. There are no charges pending at this time and the investigation is ongoing. Meanwhile, a Lewiston man is charged with murder in connection with the shooting death of a Massachusetts man. Maine State Police say on Sunday, shortly after 4 p.m., Lewiston Police responded to a report of gunshots at 30 Howe Street. Officers arrived on scene to find 20-year-old John Paquin of Worcester, Massachusetts, suffering from apparent gunshot wounds. He was transported to Central Maine Medical Center, where he was pronounced dead. At approximately 1.30 this morning, a search warrant was served at a home at 12 House Street in connection with the arrest of 28-year-old Mark John Sinclair of Lewiston earlier that night. Police say Sinclair lived at 12 House Street and had active warrants for domestic violence terrorizing, criminal mischief, and a bail violation. He was transported to the Androscoggin County Jail. Paquin's death has been ruled a homicide by the chief by the office of the chief medical examiner. Sinclair was charged with murder. He's being held without bail and is scheduled to be arraigned later this week in Androscoggin County Superior Court. Well, five people have been arrested in connection with a drug investigation in Hancock County. Maine Drug Enforcement Agency Commander Peter Arno says over the past several months, the Bucksport Police Department has been investigating a group of people suspected of distributing significant amounts of fentanyl. On July 13th, law enforcement searched a camp on Toddy Pond along the Gus Moore Road in Penobscot. Arno says they found a pound and a half of fentanyl, more than $30,000 in suspected drug proceeds and other evidence of drug trafficking. Arno says on July 15th, a vehicle from Massachusetts allegedly headed to the group in Bucksport was stopped on I-95 in Hamden. Agents found a half a pound of fentanyl then. 34-year-old Christopher Warford of Bucksport, 37-year-old Jamie Ward of Bucksport, 35-year-old Jesse Adams of Verona Island are all being charged with aggravated drug trafficking. Bail for Warford and Ward is set at $50,000. Meanwhile, Adams has been released on bail. 25-year-old Braille Perez and 28-year-old Makel Arias Abar of Massachusetts have also been charged with aggravated drug trafficking. Their bail set at $50,000 cash.
Drivers may be noticing longer wait times for car repairs, and repair shop owners are saying COVID-19 continues to play a role in that. Repair shop wait times can vary from seven business days up to a month. Eric Poirier, owner of Poirier's Garage, says he only has two technicians and is working to complete as many jobs as possible every day. Meanwhile, Herman Motor Company owner Aaron Hayes, or Aaron Haas rather, says supply chain issues are causing delays for his staff to receive parts. He adds that the lack of available technicians has contributed to the issue. There's many levels of it, but it's a workforce issue. You know, there's no question about that. And it's not the simplicity of the technicians in the dealerships. Uh, it stems right from the top. Uh, no new vehicles being available, which in return means consumers are holding on to their used vehicles longer, which means more of them need to be serviced and maintained. Haas recommends drivers think ahead when it comes to scheduled maintenance and make appointments as soon as possible. Maine's Department of Administrative and Financial Services announced today that it has successfully processed and sent $850 relief checks to all verified eligible Maine taxpayers who have filed tax returns to date. Now, the department says it sent 784 28,000 payments to Maine taxpayers, representing 91 percent of the 858,000 estimated recipients. Maine Revenue Services will continue to process checks weekly as Maine taxpayers can continue to file their returns, the deadline to do that is October 31st. For anyone who is eligible to receive a relief check who hasn't yet, then they are expected by the beginning of August, but you can go to the online portal, enter in the necessary information, and then see the status of your check. We will have that link on our website, foxbangor.com. And there is some more good news for drivers as gas prices in Maine have fallen another 10 cents a gallon in the past week. According to Gas Buddy's survey of more than 1,200 stations around the state, the average price is now $4.74 a gallon. That's more than 32 cents a gallon cheaper than a month ago, but still $1.64 a gallon higher than a year ago. So I think a lot of people happy about that, especially as they're out and about enjoying this uh, beautiful summer weather that we've been having. It's definitely, you know, there's definitely, I guess, a bit of relief, you could call it. But when right. you consider that you're still paying well over $4 a gallon, mm -hmm. it's still, you know, pretty ridiculous and affecting people every single day. So you Absolutely. have to hope that we, you know, you see those prices drop at least, a, you know, a buck and a half. Right. Yeah. yeah, just hoping that that trend continues. Absolutely. Well, with a little bit more on what we can expect in the coming hours weather-wise as we continue to venture out, let's turn things over and take a first look at our forecast. All right, Beth and Peter, thank you. Happy Monday. Your first weather is brought to you by Kings Mountain RC. And okay, so today, whew, it was hot out there, right? 86 here in Bangor, 88 Millinocket, a bit colder down east areas, but still a very warm day. We need some rain to cool us off. And oh, look, there is some rain out there now. This will overspread the entire region tonight into tomorrow morning. The severe weather threat's very low, but there could be some locally heavy rainfall as all this kind of pokes through the area tonight into early parts of tomorrow. In fact, Futurecast shows the heavy rainfall rotating through basically before midnight. We'll get some drying out tomorrow uh, before we have some more storms in our forecast later on during the week. Our forecast though tonight though is showers and storms out there, locally heavy rainfall, muggy low temperatures down near 70. Your full forecast is coming up. Beth and Peter. Muggy indeed. Yeah, yeah, those high temperatures with that rain. With so. that rain. Mm. Good times. All right, well, coming up on ABC 7 News at 6, Hudson University is hosting a three-day pharmacy summer camp where high school students can get some hands-on training. And a well-known food pantry in Herman searches for a new location to move their operations. We'll have those stories and much more as ABC 7 News at 6 continues. Selling your home is a big job. You need a team to help pull it off. Real estate is no joke, and these cats ain't laughing. You know, I think we can get you more for your home. We just posted your house online, and we're already getting great response. Buy or sell confidently with Mark and Nancy. Actually, it's Nancy and Mark. Right, Nancy and Mark Rowe. Experience, personality, results. I'm sold. I work long hours to provide for my family, but with runaway inflation, it's getting harder to make ends meet. Instead of lowering costs for families, Washington liberals are attacking America's tech innovators. That's the wrong agenda at the wrong time. The left's bill will destroy jobs, make China stronger, 
and America weaker. Working people like me will pay the price. No Republican senator should support this liberal agenda. Tell Senate conservatives to reject the left's bill. Hey! Do you want to sing a little bit? Keith Urban, the Speed of Now World Tour. The must-see show of 2022. Saturday, July 23rd in Maine Saving Amphitheater. With special guest Ingrid Andrus. Tickets on sale now at waterfrontconcerts.com or ticketmaster.com. Keith Urban. The Speed of Now World Tour. We're a AAA family. We found out about AAA insurance um, through a friend who had actually mentioned it a while ago. We ran the numbers and it totally worked. We looked at the statement for our previous insurer and then AAA insurance. Definitely, we've seen a huge difference. Switch to AAA insurance today and you could save an average of $483 on auto insurance. Compare that to State Farm, Geico, even Allstate. Call now for your free AAA full picture quote to find out how much you could save. By switching over to AAA insurance, we saved over $450. So with our savings, he bought more equipment. More money means more practice equipment. <laughs> In his world. <laughs> Why didn't we do this earlier? Why did yeah, it take so long? We're a AAA family now. AAA insurance it allows us to do so much more with our kids and spend more time with them. To find out how much you could save by switching to AAA Insurance, call 877-209-5384 for your free AAA full picture quote today. You'll be glad you did. There's one number you need to know. It's called Joe. Welcome back, everybody. Well, today marks day one for Hudson University's three-day pharmacy summer camp. Our A.J. Douglas watched as high school students dove right into the hands-on training. Hudson University hosted their 2022 pharmacy summer camp to give high school juniors and seniors the opportunity to get hands-on training for a high-demand job and a taste of college life. But this allows them an opportunity to understand what pharmacy career pharmacy education is. They live in the dorm for a couple of days. They have classes in our regular classes with our regular instructors and professors. So this gives them the opportunity to experience what college is going to be like. Kayla Hare is an incoming senior at St. Stephen's High School. She says the pharmacy camp is helping her make an educated decision about her future career goals. I think that it will definitely help make my decision on whether or not I want to be a pharmacist and what exactly I want to do after university. The American Association of Colleges for Pharmacy reports data showing a mild increase in demand for pharmacists nationwide from 2020 to 2022. The 13-year program encourages more high school seniors to study pharmaceuticals and pursue careers after graduation. The pharmacy camp is one of our best recruitment uh, effort. A lot of the students who have gone through our pharmacy camp program have successfully enrolled at Hudson University and subsequently went on pharmacy school and graduate. Hudson University has a rolling admissions process for those interested in enrolling in the School of Pharmacy. In Bangor, A.J. Douglas, ABC7, Fox 22. A well-known food pantry in Herman is currently looking for a new location in order to continue feeding the community. Matthew Jaroncic has more. We are desperately looking for some kind of a space to be able to continue to give this food out while we raise funds. Volunteer Director of Friends Supporting Friends, Carol Lackady, is worried about where her food pantry will be located after August 1st. For the next few weeks, Lackady and her group of volunteers are scrambling to both serve the community and move from the pantry's current location in the Danforth Supermarket Plaza to a new one, as the property is set to be turned into multi-use businesses. After bouncing between four different properties in the past 17 years, she understands a need within the community. We've, we've always um, been a pretty large food pantry as far as people coming to us for help. Um, we supply them with not only food, but we have clothing, we have pets, pet items and pet food, we have health and beauty aids, we have all your household products. Um, so we provide a lot more than just food to these people. Lackady says folks who go to the pantry are usually given a pre-made box with a variety of food, including cereal, canned fruit, pasta, and more. 
The organization currently has property gifted to them by the town of Herman on Billings Road and plans on moving there in the future. However, they need the community's help in raising funds in order to make this happen. And we had a building designed way back when, and 17 years, and we're still going strong, and there's people that need help um, every day. Um, it's time for us to have our own space. Reporting from Herman, Matthew Jaroncic, ABC7, Fox 22. And still to come on ABC 7 News at 6, how a graffiti artist is giving downtown Old Town a makeover. And in sports, Maine women's basketball is adding a homegrown talent to their roster. We'll have that story right after the break. Ladies, a main adventure. Holy mackerel, look at all this great back to school stuff. We've got jeans, we got lots of sneakers, lots of champion for the whole family. Get to Rennie's for back to school. Thank you for shopping Rennie's. Hey, it's Eric from Green Bear 420. We've been in business since 2010 and going strong, so stop in and check us out. We specialize in glass art by over 100 local artists and even have live glass blowing. Plus, we carry incense, novelties, t-shirts, and hard-to-find items. We have tons of local products for the tie-dye wearing person in your circle of friends. Come see us at 531 Moosehead Trail in Newport. And remember, Green Bear 420, it's not just a store, it's a lifestyle. People with plaque psoriasis are rethinking the choices they make, like the shot they take, the memories they create or the spin they initiate. Otesla, it's a choice you can make. Otesla is not a cream. It's a pill that treats plaque psoriasis differently. With Otesla, you can achieve clearer skin. Don't use if you're allergic to Otesla. Otesla can cause serious allergic reactions. It may cause severe diarrhea, nausea, or vomiting. Otesla is associated with an increased risk of depression. Tell your doctor if you have a history of depression or suicidal thoughts, or if these feelings develop. Some people taking Otesla reported weight loss. Your doctor should monitor your weight and may stop treatment. Upper respiratory tract infection and headache may occur. Tell your doctor about your medicines and if you're pregnant or planning to be. Oh, Tesla, show more of you. I know there's conflicting information about Dupuytren's contracture. I thought I couldn't get treatment yet. Well, people may think that their contracture has to be severe to be treated, but it doesn't. If you can't lay your hand flat on the table, talk to a hand specialist. But what if I don't want surgery? Well, then you should find a hand specialist certified to offer non-surgical treatments. What's the next step? Visit findahandspecialist.com today to get started. Established in 1925, Bangor Floral has been a premier provider of beautiful floral arrangements and thoughtful gifts for almost 100 years. Whatever the occasion, our premium collection of colorful blooms, blossoming plants, and gift baskets have warmed hearts for generations. We strongly support the Buy Local movement, purchasing directly from local farms and growers, and we are committed to the preservation of our environment. Bangor Floral, located at 332 Harlow Street. Stop in today to experience a flower shop like no other. Put a little more cash in your bank. Save money with half-off deals at foxbangor.com. Welcome back, everyone. We'll start things off with some breaking news out of Orono as this year's Miss Maine basketball winner, J.C. Christopher, is headed back home. Skowhegan's Christopher is transferring from Boston University to play for Amy Vashon and the Black Bears after just a short time with the Terriers. Christopher said she was unhappy during the summer session in Boston and regretted not coming to Orono. Now, the former Riverhawk entered the transfer portal last Wednesday, she said, and has already gone through the admissions process with Maine. She and the Black Bears are just waiting on BU to sign off on the move that would make it official. And when that becomes official, we will have more coverage of the story and speak with Christopher to get her take on the move. But certainly for us, excited to watch a homegrown talent play up in Orono. Some less than stellar news, though, as we transition to baseball. Just a week after Chris Sale returned from a year-long rehab process, he finds himself now right back on the injured reserve. In the first inning of Sunday's game against the Yankees, Aaron Hicks
Hicks fired a ball back at Sale. Just his second start since coming back, directly hitting the pinky finger on his throwing hand. The official injury report is a fractured left pinky, which might end his season. Talks of four to six weeks. Just another bump in the road for this already struggling Red Sox team who ended up losing the game 13-2 to and have yet to win a series against an AL East opponent this season. So, of course, they are in to the All-Star break. Not great news, but some good news. He did undergo six successful surgery on that pinky still no official time frame as to when he may be back and finally we'll stay on the baseball diamond because senior little league regionals has arrived in Bangor and like they've done for 30 years the grounds crew at Mansfield Stadium has worked their magic on the diamond it's not coming back we take pride in what we do we want to, this is uh, a landmark in Bangor and we want to keep it beautiful and we want to make it the best field that the kids can play on since 1992, Ron St. Pierre has set the tone for his maintenance team down at Mansfield Stadium. I'm picky, I want straight lines, and uh, we've led by example. And over the course of 30 years, he's seen a cast of characters enter his operation. It's a tight-knit group. I mean, they all make fun of each other. He picks on me, I pick on him. We get along great. We're a, little, we're a family. And at the end of the day, they've all shared one thing in common. They follow suit, and most of the kids who come here are also very dedicated. They have pride. Our key word here is pride. I would not want to work for anyone else. Again, like I said, he gives us the leeway, he tells us what to do, and then we just do it. And if it's wrong, he's going to say, listen, this is wrong, but this is how you fix it. That pride will be put on full display this week when the Little League Senior Regional Tournament returns to Bangor for the first time since 2019. We want to make sure that, that when they come up here, the first thing is, wow. And to get that sort of reaction, it takes more than just hopping on the mower. The average person will walk up and say, what do these guys do all day? Pretty much all of it, from painting the logos to flattening the infield to raising the colors and everything in between. You name it, we do it. Now, of course, not every task is made equal. Seth's on the mower every day. That's because it involves sitting down, not doing anything. I consider it relaxing. I'm the one doing the walking around, the, the dirty work. But in the dog days of summer, it's those personalities and relationships that makes the Mansfield crew what it is. It's kind of a fraternity type thing. Uh, we all want the best for baseball. There, there's no amateur facility uh, that's run by Little League volunteers that looks anywhere like this in the Northeast. Now, just for the record, Seth was on the mower, but he's also he's grinding it out there, too. They were working on the logo, uh, and it looked pristine from what I could see. So the tournament for regionals will start on Tuesday, and we will have coverage of that throughout the week. All right, that's sports. Here's Jeff Weller with your full five-day forecast. Jeff? All right, Dave, thank you. Uh, your full weather is brought to you by Varney Chevrolet. Come see what the Varney value is all about. And look at this. So since the solstice, right, we've lost 27 minutes of daylight since June 21st as we keep losing more and more. But we had plenty of that today, giving temperatures a boost. The high temperatures back in the upper 80s for much of the area today. A bit colder with that sea breeze along the coastal areas. But overall, a very nice, warm, muggy, humid day for us. And we have more of those on the way. In fact, many of those every day of the five-day forecast now has 80-degree temperatures in it. And the longer-range trend is this. So here we are through the end of July, keeping the Midwest and the Great Lakes above average and also... For us, here we are, above average temperatures through the end of July. That could firmly put us in the 80s and maybe even a couple of 90s out there from time to time. Okay, the drought monitor. Here it is, of course, the west. Decades of drought here. Uh, the darker colors are where it's been dry for a long period of time. They could use some rain. For us, here we are. There's not a drought going on, but this is level one. That's level two. We could definitely use some rainfall, and there's some rainfall out there right now. In fact, here it comes. There's lots of rain to get through tonight in the early parts of tomorrow morning. The severe weather threat's incredibly low with this, but locally heavy rainfall is all but likely with this as it kind of rotates through the area tonight into tomorrow. It has lots of moisture in there, so get ready for a soaking rainfall. Your garden will love this tonight. Future cast shows the story, right? So the yellows and reds, that's heavy rainfall coming through tonight. But here we are tomorrow morning, already 8 o'clock or so. It's pretty much gone, right? A couple leftover showers uh, tomorrow morning. That's going to push through by tomorrow afternoon, but it's going to leave a mark, right? We're talking a little band here of 1 to 2 inches of rainfall. 
although there'll be a widespread one inch rainfall for us tonight. And again, your garden will love that. A couple areas could see some localized flooding if the rain falls quickly enough in downtown areas, especially around Bangor. And then here we go. We also have some fog. So as the air goes calm for a few hours tonight, especially in areas that see rain, we'll likely see some dense fog well after midnight tonight. Our forecast then tonight, though, is showers and thunderstorms are out there, likely non-severe, but they will have heavy rainfall with low temperatures or not so low, low temperatures down near 70 with that south breeze going calm for a while. For tomorrow, scattered showers and storms out there are widely scattered out there with high temperatures near 85, most likely through the morning hours that rainfall clearing out late in the day and that south breeze that could gust near 15 to 20. And then looking ahead, your five day forecast by Varney Chevrolet shows the story. Look at these temperatures. It's going to feel like summer, right? Humid 80s tomorrow, also for Wednesday and for Thursday. A pretty good chance for rain showers on Thursday into Friday morning. But then the weekend again looks hot with temperatures back near 88 on Saturday. Beth and Peter. So the hot and muggy is mm. sticking around. It's a good thing the Dakin pool just reopened. Oh, absolutely. Hopefully maybe you have a baby pool in your backyard, <laughs> if nothing else. Or at least maybe know someone a who does. A sprinkler, <laughs> perhaps. Yeah, yeah. yeah, any source of cool water will definitely <laughs> Will definitely do. Yep. <laughs> All right, well, there is still more to come. Stay with us. If you have advanced non-small cell lung cancer, your first treatment could be a chemo-free combination of two immunotherapies that works differently. It could mean a chance to live longer. Opdiva Plus Your Voice for adults newly diagnosed with non-small cell lung cancer that is spread, test positive for pd one and does not have an abnormal EGFR or ALK gene. Together, Opdiva Plus Your Voice helps your immune system launch a response that fights cancer in two different ways. Opdiva Plus Your Voice equals a chance for more time together, more family time, more time to remember. Opdivo and Yervoy can cause your immune system to harm healthy parts of your body during and after treatment. These problems can be severe and lead to death. See your doctor right away if you have a cough, chest pain, shortness of breath, irregular heartbeat, diarrhea, constipation, severe stomach pain, nausea or vomiting, dizziness, fainting, eye problems, extreme tiredness, changes in appetite, thirst or urine, rash, itching, confusion, memory problems, muscle pain or weakness, joint pain, flushing or fever. These are not all the possible side effects. Problems can occur together and more often when Opdivo is used with Yervoy. Tell your doctor about all medical conditions, including immune or nervous system problems, if you've had or plan to have an organ or stem cell transplant or received chest radiation. Here's to a chance to live longer. Ask your doctor about the combination of two immunotherapies, Opdivo plus Yervoy. Thank you to all those in our clinical trials. Help Maine children win the fight against cancer by supporting the Heroes Hope Healing McDonald's Golf Classic, presented by Bangor Savings Bank. To date, the event has raised more than $500,000 to support Northern Light Pediatric Cancer Care. In addition, the McDonald's Golf Classic supports Camp Hope, a free summer camp for children with cancer or blood disorders. You can help support the kids by registering or donating today at McDonald'sHHHGC.org. Gas and heating oil prices are the highest ever. Why? Because Joe Biden and the liberals in Congress took a hard left turn and dragged Jared Golden with them. Biden and Golden turned off more American energy production, stopping pipelines and exploration, looking to buy from our enemies. They are going the wrong way. Mainers need relief, not empty promises. Tell Jared Golden to help open American energy production and lower the price of gas. This week, how did former President Trump react as the January 6th riot unfolded? The committee analyzes the details, plus tracking the outbreak of monkeypox. More Americans turn to World News tonight with David Muir, the most watched program on all of television. street style makeover. Mike Rich is a graffiti artist from Portland and he's been tasked with creating two unique pieces of art to spruce up the downtown area. It's all part of a project with downtown Old Town funded through the Maine Development Foundation and matching contributions from local business owner Alex Gray. Rich has been working on graffiti projects projects since 1985 and said the industry has changed a lot since he started. 
I tried doing art with spray paint and no one really wanted anything to do with me and now it seems like there's street art everywhere, um, you know, on the television, in the stores, all over the world, you know, even in Portland there's a handful of artists who are just doing art full time. Well, he said he enjoys adding these street art elements to his work and right now he'll be graffitiing two electric boxes, one with a design he created in reference to some old vintage advertisements from Old Town Canoe and the other will have the coyote mascot from the local schools. There's a method to the steps that you take. The first layer is I have a huge cap so I can cover the whole box in about five minutes and then it's the caps get smaller and smaller as you get closer to completion. Rich said he used about 60 to 70 colors on both boxes to complete the project. You can check out some of his work and the final product on Instagram or Facebook at Mike Rich Designs. I think it's so cool seeing that art, that street style art, mm -hmm. uh, but also him using it to, to do these rural kind of landscapes that you see here in Maine. It's I mean, a really cool blend. And he certainly picked two, you know, reasonable related images mm -hmm. to Old Town. So I yeah. think it's I think it's just going to brighten things up and yeah. just add add some eye popping color. Yeah, I really like that. All it's right. Cool well, that's going to do it for us folks from everybody here at ABC 7 News. Take care and have a great rest of your night. Good night, everyone.